required, she will make a correction in the House. Thank you. Madam Speaker. I call Stuart Smith. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, well, it's a great pleasure to speak on the Earthquake Commission Amendment Bill, which is, uh, it is actually uh, bringing in some, some key things that, that are great. And can I start by saying that we will uh, support the bill to the fir uh, through first reading to select committee. And it builds on a lot of work done by uh, the, the member that was uh, just on his feet. Uh, and I, it particularly uh, some of the recommendations from the discussion document of, of uh, 2015, which is New Zealand's future natural disaster insurance scheme a discussion document. And uh, in particular, Madam Speaker, the uh, increasing the cap to $150,000 from $100,000 uh, plus GST, that's a, that is uh, absolutely required. And given the time that's gone since that, that uh, figure was put in place, it absolutely should be moved up uh, to $150,000. Removing the contents insurance is also a, a, an innovative and absolutely needed and was identified in that document I just referred to. Uh, it is contents insurance is far better uh, held with private insurers uh, rather than a public good entity like uh, EQC, and I think that's where it should lie. Um, also clarifying uh, the authority to share information, I think that is, uh, of course, with caveats, and that will be teased out during the select committee uh, process, and I think that's, that's very good. However, there is an area I do have concerns about, uh, which is the uh, enabling claim notifications uh, uh, instead of uh, within three months going out to two years, and I want to explore that a little further. I did put in uh, an Official Information Act request to the Minister uh, for any Treasury advice around that, uh, and I'll go into that a little bit more in detail shortly. But um, I think this is a really serious matter, and it is uh, something that we should get full disclosure on. And uh, I do, don't have a lot of confidence, I'd have to say, because I have uh, started out with a very reasonable number of, of written questions to the Minister. And with the um, avoiding tactics uh, that were coming back with the answers, he ended up with 480 written questions to try and get some answers out of the Minister, including one, uh, Madam Speaker, which asked the, asked the Minister, does she agree with um, answering written questions at, on time? Which came back, yes, but it was late. So I think this is a really serious matter, and those, the information uh, from Treasury should be shared with, uh, with the House and with, with Parliament. So, and this does relate to the bill. So, Madam Speaker, in the, the, the issue with re, uh, extending the time period is what happens, uh, as was identified in that discussion document, where the um, uh, rein, uh, reinstatement occurs ap after an event, the definition needs to be much more clear than it is, so there's no uh, re room for doubt there. And also, that goes to the matter of apportionment. That is really important from a reinsurance perspective. This is a public good uh, insurance with EQC, but it relies on commercial contracts. And those contracts are with international reinsurers. And they don't have to be here. They come here, uh, it's a commercial contract, but they want and expect to know what their liability is so they can price it. And that is very important. And this isn't addressed in this bill. It should have been. All was, uh, we have been promised there's going to be an inquiry. Why we need another inquiry into this, I have no idea. It will likely only cover off operational matters. We should have had the substantive bill now and have the minor bill later on. That is, if we don't have and maintain the, the confidence of the reinsurance industry in our processes here in New Zealand, that will have a really uh, potential impact on our uh, our country and, and the confidence in our own building sector. So I think that that should uh, have been put in this bill, Madam Speaker. And I'm calling on the Minister to release that information and advice that she had from Treasury on reinsurance. There's nothing in the RIS. Uh, it should be, but there's nothing in there. So I don't have any confidence on that, uh, Madam Speaker. Other than that, I do support the bill. Um, I think, uh, as I said, we will uh, vote for it and we will um, look to examine it very closely in select committee. Uh, and, and on that basis, I commend the bill to the House. I call Dr Duncan Webb. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I look forward